This podcast is brought to you by The Shift. It's story time! Hello and welcome to the Storytime podcast. Hello Claire, thank Hello. you for having me. Hello, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, so today we have Niall Gleeson. Hello. How are you? I, Gleeson, on the internet. Um, and basically I invited you in because I wanted to talk to you about something really exciting you did recently where you cycled around Ireland, like a very sizable portion of Ireland. Do you remember how the decision came about that you decided to do this trip? Or it, it was just, it just occurred to me. It's like, why don't I just go? Like, why don't I just like, the, pa- the pandemic, the restrictions are easing. What can I do? It's like, people go like on group holidays with their friends. Group holidays is not an option at the moment. And I don't have friends anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, that's that's unfair. I have lots of friends. I have no friend groups. Yeah. You know the way people have friend groups and like I have maybe one friend group, but it's very grown up. Like two of them are married. Ooh. One of them just had a kid, <laughs> and the other one's a shut in. To be fair, the kid does you know ruin your social life. Yeah. To some degree. Well, they or just like had a kid like two weeks ago. Congratulations, David and Liam. <laughs> and they won't listen to this. <laughs> oh, I bumped the table. No. That's okay. Um. Uh. So like. I have no friend groups, so that, that wouldn't really be an option anyway. I just, like, I have lots of friends, but, like, once again, even if you had a friend group, it's not, like, something you can you should do, even under light restrictions. It's not something you should have done as getting a big group and travel to another part of the country. So I said, look... It was the perfect activity for a pandemic, really. Yeah, I was thinking... Solo it's traveler. I can do alone. I want to be alone anyway, because I've been cooped up in a house with my housemates, who I love, but at the same time, not only were we in the same house together, but we're all, like gamers so we're all so i'm on one side of the chimney in my with my pc eric's on the other side of the chimney with his pc and eric's fiance is on the couch with her laptop and we're all just gaming in that room all day (laughs) so we're just all up in each other's business (laughs) and of course they had to listen to me like complain about my job for like four months i was like why don't they fire me no i was i'm kidding but like uh but they, like, they had to listen to me complain and suffer and, you know, I was all up in their business. They were all being coupley and shit and I just, you know, it was just... It's a lot. It sounds like a lot. lot. It yeah. gets to a point where you're just like, and of course there's the stress of the pandemic. You can't go anywhere. Like, and it's just, it's compounded frustration is what it is. Every single time you think, ooh, I want to do this. And you can't. And you have to remind yourself that you can't. And it just kind of compounds itself. And it's just like one bit of frustration on top of another bit of frustration on top of another bit of frustration. And there's no release. So I just said to myself, what can I do by myself that's responsible, uh, environmentally conscious, and just a big adventure to get back into adventuring? Because I want to get back into adventuring. You know, I want to go on adventures. You know, I'm pushing 30 and I've got nothing going for me, so I may as well just go on adventures. <laughs> as you can see, my humor is very much all about self-deprecation. <laughs> Does he think that way? Should I be concerned? Should I call somebody? Hmm, who knows? <laughs> Comment down below. <laughs> Comment down. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Should Niall get mental help? Probably. Um, <laughs> it's 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 humour, but, you know, a lot of good humour has got a nugget of truth in there. Um, so take me through from idea to so setting from, off. From idea to setting off. Okay, so I uh, came up with the idea, was really excited about it, was really pumped about it, told Ellen about it. She got really excited about it too. Um, and... She got really, really pumped about it. And then, as is usual for me, I started doing some planning, some some uh, uh, put, putting some ideas together. I put a map together. Like, this is how out of touch I was. I was doing bits and pieces of cycling for training anywhere between 20 and 50 kilometers in a day around Dublin. Right? That's more training than I, th- I thought you did. Uh, no, but I only did that for about two weeks. Still 50 kilometers. <sighs> That's not... With breaks in between, it's not a huge amount. Like, the days that I had planned for myself, the lowest days, of which there were only a few, were 70 kilometers. The highest were, like, 120. And I thought this was, like, this was okay. I can can do this. This is grand. No, it's not grand, Claire. It's not grand at all. (laughs) The first two days were 70 kilometers, and they were low. And I was dying. Oh, my. I nearly gave up on day two. I nearly gave up on day two. I cycled 60 kilometers once for uh, for the race, the Giro de Walia in Mayo, mm. and it was horrendous. My arse was so sore <laughs> after it. First of all, if you're doing <laughs> any kind of long, like, cycling and camping trip, put 
all the weight on your bike. I put most of the weight on my bike and some of it on my back. On the first day, it must have been about 70-30. 30% on my back, 70% on the bike. I was crippled after two days, even with just the, the, the lighter weight on my back. Absolutely crippled. Like, you have to, like... You, you can't have any real, real weight on your back because you need to be able to move. You need to be able to, you can't have that weight because like, you're over the bike and then there's this weight pushing down on you. It's horrendously painful. And that was even after, because I was an adamant follower, or an avid, excuse me, follower of your Instagram stories during this time. Because yeah. uh, I just thought it was such an exciting thing to do and I was so jealous. Uh, but also, I don't think I'd ever be able to do it. But you posted on your Instagram stories around that time that somebody had given you the advice to take weight off your bike. So that was after... No, to take... Or sorry, weight, the other way around. Yeah. Take it off your back and put it on your bike. Yeah. Because so originally you had even more weight on your back, I had didn't about you? 50-50. <laughs> about 50-50. Like the weight on my back was tremendous. Heavy even for just, just standing with it. Like just a huge amount on my back. So he recommended cable ties and duct tape. And I got a bunch of cable ties and duct tape and just strapped a bunch of stuff to my bike on a daily basis. Um... Okay, so that's I'm getting ahead of myself. So from inception, I, I put together a map, and it was all the way around Ireland. It was Dublin, out the south, hugging the coast, all the way down. Um, I never had the the bottom left part of the country, so south, uh, west part of the country. That, that Cork Peninsula, that whole kind of... So my, my plan was always to skip that huge chunk of cork because apparently you can do that yourself. You can do that all in two weeks by itself. It's just a massive amount of up and down and back and forth and there's a huge amount of sea. So I figured I, I'd skip that. I'd go straight for the West Coast and uh, I'd do that another time for another trip. So it, it was basically the whole way around the country. That was the original ambition. Um, but I always knew to myself, I gave myself points to stop. I gave myself uh, cork, Limerick, because my sister's in Limerick. Galway, because my family's in Galway. Uh, Sligo and Letterkenny. Those were my stopping points. So I could give up at those points comfortably. But if I was in between them, I'd be pushing for the next one, if you know and what I mean. And was the original plan then to cycle back from Letterkenny and finish it? The original plan was to cycle back through the north, like right, oh, wow. the, right the way through the north. So at no point had you like originally planned, right, I'm going to get this far and then get a bus back. Like it was always... It was always just go. Wow. Um... But at the same time, I knew myself that that was ambitious. I knew that that was probably not going to happen, but I th said to myself, aim big, do as much as you can. Yeah. Because it's not like, it, like, it wasn't like a, a challenge where I torture myself. My brother was, my brother was on to me, giving out to me when I was ready to stop, saying, just keep going, you know, experience of a lifetime. It's just like, I'm the kind of person, I'm not going to do something unless I enjoy it. Yeah. You know, I don't get enjoyment out of like, physically punishing myself just so I can get to the end of it going, ah, I did that. Yeah. That wouldn't be, I'd rather do the whole thing and really enjoy it. Um, even if it meant taking a few months off, starting from Limerick where I stopped and just continuing on from there if I wanted to. Like, oh yeah, you know, 100%. Yeah. Or just do it all again. But like differently, you know, cycle trip, phase two, whatever. Yeah. Version two. So uh, I planned the whole way around. I, I even have the map saved. I can send you on the map and you can stick it in the video if you want. Um, and it was ridiculous, the distances. The distances were insane. And a bunch of the places on the map where I said I would wild camp, wild camping kind of went out the window the first night. What's wild camping? Wild camping is where you don't camp in a campsite. You just camp side of the road, you camp in a field, you camp oh, I didn't on the think beach. It had, I didn't know it had a name. Uh, yeah, wild camping. And uh, I did wild camping the first night. And I'll be honest, if I was with somebody, no problem wild camping. I was just so on edge the first night. Really? Yeah, so on edge. Like, but even not not actually. It was subconsciously because in my head I was like, "This is grand. I'm gonna go to sleep." But I was jumping at shadows all night. I was uh, waking up all night. There was a dog that came sniffing around at like seven o'clock in the morning, and I was like, "What is that? Demons!" And like, <laughs> um, and did you have the bike locked up that night? Yeah, I, I'd lock the bike up every night. But see, I just locked the bike up to itself. So I. Uh, oh yeah, so not really even to a. To anything to in anything. So like, yeah, yeah, it could still go. It could still go, but it was right next to the tent. You'd have to be very quiet. But I could see why that put you on edge then the yeah, whole night. It just night, put yeah. me on edge. I had everything on me. I was conscious of losing it. See, that kind of reined me in a little bit as well. Not having, you, you, if you think about it, you don't have a home base at all. Your home base is your bike and you're moving everywhere with it. I went swimming once on my entire trip. I was thinking, oh, I'll stop at beaches loads and I'll go swimming. Yeah. I went swimming once just because there was nowhere... To put your stuff. To put my stuff. Yeah. 
there's nowhere safe. Uh, that was all the planning I did. I had Decathlon. Shout out to Decathlon. <laughs> not, not sponsored. sponsored. <laughs> I would not have been able to do this trip without Decathlon. Obviously, I'm... And sorry, just an explainer for anyone who doesn't know, Decathlon is a shop. Yeah. Sports shop. It's a sports shop. It's like... Um, uh, mass produced it's not the like oh, I'm not going to say it, like it's mass produced it sounds so bad it's just it's economies Cheap. Of, economies of scale a bit like Ikea it's ch- it's cheaper because they produce so much of it yeah. at such a large scale um, not that it's not good quality it's very good quality um, <laughs> I, I can account to it I'm not like, I can attest to it I'm not being like uh-huh. <laughs> um so I wouldn't have been able to do it without this because obviously, um, and at the same time, I do want to clarify as well. Although I was off work and on the pandemic utility, pay- the pandemic unemployment payment, um, I was applying for jobs. Yeah, I applied for jobs before I left. I was actually on LinkedIn a couple of times during the trip in my tent, <laughs> chatting to people. <laughs> and uh, I had applied for a few jobs on the road and applied for a few jobs when I get back. So like at any point, if an employer had t- contacted me on my trip and been like, oh, we can interview you tomorrow and you need to be in Dublin for it. You would have come back. I would have come back. Yeah. Like I, would, I wasn't Dawson. Like I was just doing something while in the meantime. Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, during the pandemic, like it's not like employers were throwing out jobs either. No, it's not like there's jobs. <laughs> there's not even jobs left, right and center at the moment. Like, yeah, I know. Um, but uh, so that aside, uh, with the money that I had, it was very limited and I didn't want to spend a huge amount of it. I was able to buy, I borrowed a tent from a friend of mine. Thank you very much for that, Tiernan. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Um, it's all clean and it's at home and wrapped up and give back to you whenever you want. <laughs> um, so I got uh, the a really good backpack. I got like a camping pillow. I already had a sleeping bag and a sleeping mat. I got like cooking equipment. I got like a little butane torch. Once again, a, st- a simple camping setup cannot do much. I tried to scramble eggs at one point. <laughs> that was on my story. <laughs> <laughs> they were the most disgusting <laughs> things. I, I ate them all. I felt sick for the rest of the evening. But they were the most disgusting things. It's like I, it's like I cooked a fart and ate it. <laughs> it was disgusting. Um, like the only thing that you can really reliably cook on one of those little butane heaters, you can you can heat water and do like a, a water based dish, like a stew or something, or like a soup. Or like fry sausages. It was grand for frying sausages, but even then it was just a bit of a bitch to clean afterwards. Um, but yeah, careful with those little tiny little butane torches, butane camp stoves. They don't do much. <laughs> um, so I bought one of them. I bought a whole bunch of stuff. I bought rope for like emergencies, but also used as a clothesline. Um, I bought waterproof shoes. I'm wearing them right now. They are the best. They, honestly, even if you're any kind of hiker, walker, cyclist, they look like normal shoes. Like they look like hiking shoes. They don't look like waterproof shoes. If you, but see, there's the thing: waterproof shoes in like like Gore-Tex waterproof shoes that you get in like the Great Outdoors or North Face. They're like two hundred quid. I got these for seventy quid in Decathlon, and they are perfect. And like I, I think everyone in Ireland should have, have a pair of waterproof shoes. Even if you're not into adventures. That makes sense, actually. Because this yeah. is a wet country. Mm. You know, uh, how many times have you gotten out of the car and stepped into a puddle? A few. <laughs> I've, I've done it a few times since buying these shoes. <laughs> and I've just been like, oh, Grant, they're just waterproof. Just walk through this wet field, I'm grand. Don't even have to think twice about it. Uh, so I got a bunch of um, cycling pants uh, with, like, the padded arse. Nice. Yeah. I was actually, that was what on my list of questions to ask you was, did you have to wear lots of padding <laughs> we can, that's a whole other part of the story if you, wanna, <laughs> if you wanna go into that And how painful that is Cause I, um, you feel it eventually Despite the amount of padding as well oh, You feel it after day one like, Oh really? That's oh, 100% up, Like even with the massive cushion Strapped to my arse It's like <laughs> at, at a cushioned seat Had a cushioned uh, Cushioned pants Doesn't matter Like you're feeling that It's sore Um. So uh, where am I? So all the bits that I bought in Decathlon. Uh, yeah, a bunch of like carabiners, a bunch of waterproof stuff, um, uh, water bottles. I had I had like um, uh, a water bladder, you know, in my bag. Yes. So like hydrate, very important. Actually, one thing I will say before I get into the, the, the meat and potatoes of the trip was that the only thing I lost the entire trip was a phone charger. And that's it. Well. Yeah. Um, but absolutely, th- things that I didn't get into Decathlon but were absolute necessities were... Uh, an attachment for my bike to put my phone on it. And the other thing that I bought 
absolutely invaluable, even just for daily life. Um, although I haven't used it, since, I say that I haven't used it since I got back from my trip because obviously there's outlets everywhere. Um, always handy to have a power bank. Yeah. I was able to Instagram my entire trip because I had a power bank. Yeah. I so when you got to a, uh, an outlet, you would charge your phone and the power bank and then have the power bank, is it? Yeah, I would charge yeah. my phone and the power bank. The power bank was good for like six full charges on my wow, phone. Wow, that's a good yeah. one. It's Anchor. Really good power Not bank. sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored. I'm just telling you, it's a good, it's a good product. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shout out a good product that I, I got good news out of. Um, well, handy thing is my phone has the warp charge feature. It's a, it's a OnePlus phone. Not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> Story time, Niall's favorite products. Niall's favorite products. But I gotta say, I actually meant to do this on my trip. Talk about the products that got me through it. Like, 100%. The OnePlus phone, amazing battery. Apps, OnePlus 70 is amazing battery. Amazing. It was like, I'm saying like 600 quid. It was great. So, sorry, what is a warp? Uh, warp charge is basically, you like, if my phone is at like 10%, warp charge is a feature that if I use the official plug and the official wire into an outlet, it's charged in 30 minutes. Oh, they call it warp charge now. They used to just call it fast charge. Yeah, well, that, that's their uh, like Lightning has their proprietary version of it. So, like, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, like everyone has their own version of yeah. it. Yeah, so I I can't live without the quick charge now. Yeah, yeah. the quick charge is just it's, it's, it's invaluable. Well, uh, obviously the power bank didn't work with quick charge, but it was enough to keep yeah. the phone going. I think my phone only died once the entire trip, and that was my own fault. Um, it was absolutely invaluable like people are thinking like what are you doing out there in a tent by yourself like just like like first of all i was on instagram loads and yeah and all, sure you'd not, be doing I'm the not, same thing in the house like I'm watching off, netflix i'm not off grid I'm, I'm watching netflix i'm <laughs> i'm keeping up to date on all my youtube videos i'm like you know i'm just doing my my usual stuff that i would be doing at home just in a tent in the middle of nowhere um so like that was an absolute lifesaver was the was the power bank and all the accessories that I had, all the bits and pieces I picked up from Decathlon. I'm trying to think now what was really, really invaluable, but nothing's coming to mind. It was always, it was nice to have the, the first aid kit. I used that a couple of times when I fell off the bike. Um, the shoes, the shoes were like an absolute oh, dream. My, the jacket, that jacket right there. Also 70 or 80 quid from Decathlon. Waterproof. Best, I, wow. best jacket I've ever had. Unbelievable. So it's, it's really perfect for like rainy Irish weather and it's very stylish. I like it. <laughs> It is very stylish. Yeah, you look like, well. Yeah. yeah. Right. And tell me more about the trip. The trip itself. Okay. So that's gotten through the prep work. So I got through all the prep work. Um, see, I, I wanted to say earlier, my enthusiasm, as with all of my projects, tends to fade when I start doubting myself. Shouldn't do this. This is too risky. This is way outside my comfort zone. I won't be able to do this. But I got to say, big shout out to my housemate and friend Ellen. Well, she's not my housemate anymore. She's still my friend. <laughs> <laughs> she left me. Uh, <laughs> she left me and got an adorable dog. How dare she? Um, so uh, she was very encouraging. She would not. Like, it was to the point where she wasn't, like, trying to talk me out of my doubt because I didn't really voice my doubt. But she didn't let the doubt seep in. It was just really, I'm so proud of you. Well done. This is incredible. You're going to do so well. Just constant, constant encouragement. Now, after the fact, I realized she could, she knew, she knew that I would have, I would have bitched Pulled out of this out, yeah. if, if she hadn't, but she hundred percent encouraged me, kept me going. The whole thing wouldn't happen without her. And I owe her a tremendous amount for that. Um, so the, and I just kept, they got to the point where I was leaving and I was just like, huh, here I go. <laughs> Off on an adventure. Like, it wasn't like, oh, gung-ho adventure man. No, it was like, mm, I'm going to cycle there. <laughs> um, so I left anyway. I got delayed one day because uh, there was just too much weight on my back. I, so my sister, last minute emergency prep, she came over. We went to Halfords, got uh, uh, paneer bags for the, the sides of my bike to put more weight into those. Um, we got a bunch of cable ties, a bunch of duct tape, like my friend suggested, and put a bunch of weight on my bike. Still too much. Uh, took a bunch of extra stuff with me that I didn't need. Took too much clothes. Took too much bits and pieces. Once, once again, inexperience. Like, if I was to do this again, I'd know exactly what to take. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, you don't want to... I wanted this to be my adventure. You know, I wanted this to be my thing. My learning experience. I wanted to make my mistakes. So I really, like, when it came to advice in the early stage, I asked for it. And didn't listen to it. No, I asked for it, and I took what I wanted. Gotcha. But when I was given unsolicited advice, I was just saying, like, that's grand, man, but it's too late now, and 
this is my trip and my learning experience. Yeah, you need to learn the hard way. These are my mistakes to make. And I wanted it to be that. Um, so then I set off, um, all wrapped up and ready to go. I don't even think I told you about it. You picked up on it on like the first day. Um, and you you shared it on your story immediately. And you oh, shared it Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was like, picked up on what? Uh, I think I just saw it on your Instagram story. Yeah, yeah. you saw my Instagram story and you picked up on it immediately. And uh, see, I just assume nobody watches anything I put out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, Claire, she's, she's actually watching. Um, and then you put it out there and I got a bunch of followers and a bunch of traction. And uh, I'm not saying like, like, I started out with like 900 followers. I think I have 1,300 followers now. Oh, wow, that's a good jump. Yeah, it's a good jump. Um, I d- definitely, they just, I uh, got a lot of people from you, got a lot of people from like hashtags and stuff, got a lot of people just discovering me and a lot of people from Try. Um, and I think I got into it and I was asking, were you going to like create content around it? And you were kind of like, no, I'm just like doing the experience. And I no, was I like- No, w- I was doing content as well. I yeah, but said, like, I think I, 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 I was expecting originally you were going to do like a vlog series or something on YouTube. Well, there, there were plans. Yeah. There were plans. Claire. This, 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 that's the thing. You, like, very ambitious. Like, now that I understand the amount of energy required to to propel yourself around the country <laughs> on a bike, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do TikToks. I'm going to do Instagram. I might even do some vlogs using my brother's um, uh, GoPro, which I didn't use once the entire trip. <laughs> um, oh, I had so many plans. But no, literally all I could handle was Instagram. Instagram was there. It was easy to use. It was stories, bite-sized chunks. It was just, it made sense. The format made sense. Yeah, it, it is great for that kind of thing. But I was glued to it at my end. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, I, I got a lot of really positive feedback, especially from like old friends from like school and stuff that I hadn't spoken to in a long time. Um, I got a lot of really, really positive feedback and it was really nice to reconnect with some people. And we've been to like lunch and stuff since I've gotten back. Um been, it was a, it was a really really great experience. Um, so yeah, that was that was when I set off. I had lots of plans to do a lot of content. That kind of went out the window, just because. Yeah, of, fair enough. So um, the first part of my trip, which I thought was like I was I was really encouraged by it. You know, I got from my house to Bray, and that was a good long cycle. You know, it was like oh like a cycle to Bray, awesome. But then, then the Wicklow Mountains, then the Wicklow Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then I decided that, you know, there was a there was a point, I can't even remember, I think it was Ardmore Point down in Wicklow somewhere. Um, it's now private. It's a private beach now. It didn't used to be a private beach, so I was planning on camping there. Got to the fenced off road to the beach. It's just oh, like, no. prosecutors will be killed. No, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there was basically, there was signs everywhere. There was cameras everywhere. Do not come beyond this point. This is private property. So I got there way later than I expected. But at the same time, okay, so although I did some, like, I want to be very clear. I uh, I do like the adventure stuff, and I do want to do more adventure stuff. But ultimately, I'm posh and I'm soft. <laughs> All right, that's just that's just me being honest about who I am. Fair, you know. Uh, death is definitely outside my comfort zone. Like very first day, I stopped in a in a in a really nice gastro pub in Wicklow. You know, I got myself some really nice fish cakes, bit of sweet chili sauce. You know, some nice food. Like you know, I wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't like I'm going to forage for berries now. I'm bear grills. Um, yeah, you weren't drinking your own piss. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. <laughs> uh, so, like, that was the first. Like, I basically, I wasn't even planning on doing that. I was just like, I was so tired by the time I got over that hump because, like, it goes. Like, here's the thing about towns everywhere. Here's the thing you learn about, like, like just town planning in general, especially when it comes to older countries like Ireland, where towns have been here for hundreds of years, they build towns next to rivers <laughs> in low-lying areas and by the sea. <laughs> That's where they put towns, Claire. And you might think going into a town where you're just like, wee, all the way down. You have to climb that mountain again. You have to climb that mountain again. And Bray is in a big fucking hole. All right, Bray is in a big fucking hole that you have to climb all the way out of. Every single town is. Every time you go down into a town, you have to make peace with the fact that you are dragging your ass out of that town again on the other side. To look on the bright side, though, does that mean at least at the very end of cycles you had this relief of like, oh, cycle down, get off? Not necessarily, because at the same time, I don't know how Ireland does it. It's just like maybe a, a freak of physics. It just always seems like there's less downhill <laughs> than uphill. <laughs> maybe it's just what it feels like. Maybe just downhill goes so quickly, uphill just yeah. takes forever. I don't know. 
But I'm just like, how is it that I'm always going uphill and never going downhill? <laughs> Like, that's not fair. That's not... It shouldn't be how the world works. This weird MC Escher painting where everyone's just always climbing the stairs. <laughs> so, as I mentioned previously about planning, like, days, planning all my days out, my stops and stuff, the stops actually remain pretty consistent. Um, But uh, the days definitely changed a bit. So I more added stops rather than changing stops. You know yeah, I, mean? I noticed that. You did mention in your Instagram stories that one day you have to... Your distance after you realized how long 70 yeah, kilometers that was. Yeah, that was. was day three. Yeah. Yeah. So the first day was 70 kilometers. Uh, so that was, actually ended up being more, cl- actually ended up being closer to 80 because I was originally going to Ardmore Point. Ardmore Point is now Private Beach. Uh, ended up down the road at British Bay. Gorgeous beach. I couldn't but added have, another 10k. Yeah. Ouch. Couldn't, well see, I ended up getting there at like half nine. That was my, I think that was my latest finish ever. In the whole trip. It was about half nine. Um, and genuinely, I cannot like stress this enough. I was, I was the next day I was dead. I was a human zombie. It was ridiculous. Um, but when I got there, so much energy When I got there and set up the tent and, you know, trudged my way onto the beach. Like, you know, there was a good camping spot down the way. And I was like, fuck that. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go over this hill and, and lie down. Um it was stunning. I still go back and I look at those uh stories from the first night because I just it was just really, really magical. That that was the that was the most magical night for me, I think, just because it was I did it. You know what I mean? I got over the first hurdle. I did my 70 kilometers and I got there and I set up my tent, everything was there, I had a cup of tea. That I cooked on my little stove. I'd say it tasted so good. It was so it good. It the best cup of tea ever had. A little bit of, like, because obviously, like, I was I was on the herbal tea because uh, I can't be bringing milk everywhere with you. So it was... See, that's another thing I just wouldn't have thought of. Mm, can't be bringing milk everywhere with you. So you can't bring any kind of really perishables with you. You're just kind of eat, you're just kind of eating on the move. We'll talk about diet as well. Yeah. <laughs> the diet was- but that's a good question just before I forget. Do you have all of your stories from the trip on a highlight that people can go check out on your Instagram? 100% is on my Instagram. I have done, I think, I'm not sure if I fully finished it yet. I might need to, might need to go into it and check but I haven't put up much stories since I got kind of burned out on Instagram to be honest Fair enough, yeah. and I felt uh, it's one of those things where you're just like people are like oh I'd love to see your day today and I'm just like would you really <laughs> it's like you, al- you almost want to it's like maybe it's like topping yourself it's just like why would I want to put up something that's not like fun and exciting because everything else was so fun and exciting you know uh, I don't know maybe it's just like, maybe I'm in my own head I tend to doubt myself when I'm creating anything um, that's why I don't create anything <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's all all of my story, all saved. All so it's cycle trip one, two, and three. I must brand it a little bit and do a little something with it just to make it look a bit better. And your Instagram, sorry, is I Gleason, right? It's, yeah, it's I Gleason. Yeah, no spaces. Actually, I thought there was an underscore in there, but there's not. Just I Gleason. That's me. Um, so that's I G L E E S O N for anyone who's not going to check the description. <laughs> <That was like, laughs> <laughs> Almost an ASMR spelling of my name. I G L E S O N. Have a nice sleep. Um, <laughs> um, so sorry, continue. Where you had your it? cup of tea. I had my cup of tea. I was over the moon, brushed my teeth, everything. Uh, that's another thing. Water. I had a uh, uh, w- uh, one liter bottle of a squeezy bottle of water and I had my bladder. So you always have to be conscious that yeah, you're able to fill it up. And that, uh, so the one liter bottle was really just for camp stuff and the bladder was for drinking on the road. And I was aiming to get the, get through one of those bladders for the entire trip. So that's three liters. Oh yeah. You'd be, you'd be sweating something fierce. Like honestly, I was getting through a bladder and a half by the end of it. Like you really pump and sweat the whole time. So you need to be drinking water the whole that's time. That's what I mean. You're, you were, you thought one bladder would last you the whole trip. One bladder would last me the whole day. Okay, that makes way more sense. I was like, yeah. how? I was no. like, no, I would have thought you would have been drinking, yeah, one constantly, a day. Constantly, constantly, one a day. Um, Sometimes one and a half a day. So I was over the moon, you know, because um, I'm really bad. Okay, so I should clarify as well. I'm really bad at maintaining contact with people. You know, my friends will tell you this. My family will tell you this. I just, I'm in my own little world. I think it's, part of it comes from being depressed. Part of it just comes from... Maybe who I am, I don't know, but I'm really bad at just kind of thinking, oh, I'll call that person or oh, I'll text that person. Or a lot of times I don't text people because I'd be like, oh, I don't, don't want to bother them. Like, so they don't like, 
anyone who's listening to this who I know who is like, I never hear from Niall. You don't hear from me because I don't want to bother you. <laughs> and that's me. Um, uh, so, like, this was a good, this was a really good exercise for me because I was calling family, like, every night. Every night. It was like, I had a system in place. Like, it just became a routine. I would ring my my mom at night. I would ring my sister at night before I went to bed. And then in the mornings, I would ring my dad because he's he's an early riser. So I'd get him in the morning when I got up. So that was that was the routine for the entire trip. Um, so it was really good for that. And I would call them every night and I would call dad every morning and give them an update and let them know what was going on, make, make sure that I was safe. Because mom was, mom was a whole other chapter of the story. Like she was just fucking <laughs> terrified. She didn't want any of it to happen. That was one of um, my first thoughts, actually, when you mentioned about people giving you unsolicited advice. I was like, I can't believe his mom wasn't like, what are you doing? Mom, <laughs> mom was like, like if like if I had said yes to everything mom had said, I would have stayed in a and b every single night. <laughs> every single night, she's like, you're you're on a beach. Is there any, like, is there anywhere to stay around the place? Like, like God love her. She was trying to be supportive. Failing miserably, but <laughs> trying. Doing her best. Doing her best. yeah. yeah, yeah. Honestly, she would have put me up in five star hotels the entire time. Because like, <laughs> she's like, "What are you doing?" Like, you know. So that was the that was the one and only night I wild camped. And although I was on top of the moon, I was loving life. It was a lovely evening. Really, just look at those first couple of stories. Oh my god, I cannot stress enough how magical that first night was for me. It was really, really nice. I had my little camp stove, had my cup of tea, brushed my teeth, rang my family, uh, got into my tent, which is all set up. Um, but did not get a good night's sleep at all was jumping at shadows all night. What, like, I just could not relax because I knew I was on my own in a tent in the middle of nowhere. Uh, sounds of people off in the distance, noises, the ocean, birds, everything would just, just set me off. Dog woke me up in the morning sniffing around my tent. You know, just could not relax. So that was my one and only night of wild camping. Honestly, it doesn't change the experience a huge amount. Um, I can... Honestly, a test for, I don't. I think I stayed in one bad campsite. One bad campsite all the way around the country. Every other night I stayed in a campsite or a B&B because I, like I said to myself, I'm not gonna, like if I need, uh, if I need a B&B, I'm gonna take a B&B. So I think I stayed in a and b uh, including my breaks in Cork and stuff, which I was always planning on taking. I visited a friend in Cork. Um, uh, so I think I stayed in B&Bs like six nights out of the 14 or 15 or whatever it was. Um, so for the most part, it was camping. Uh, so that was the first night, and I woke up the next day, and I was dead. Bad night's sleep, horrendous night's sleep. I was chatting to my dad. That was the second day, and I honestly felt like giving up. Um, I dragged myself. I packed up my bike for the first time, which is the first time I'd done it on the road, which was tough. Um, dragged myself into Arklow. Found a little deli just on the outskirts of Arklow. Cannot remember the name of it. It's in my story. God bless those women. Because I, I shambled into that deli and I collapsed into a chair and they just fed me. They fed me. They let me fill up my water. They let me sit there for as long as I wanted. They gave me stuff for free. Like, bless those ladies. Bless those angels in Arklo. Absolutely. Um, it was Arklo that my sister came up with a genius idea because I had too much stuff. I had brought a bunch of extra stuff and even just by the stuff that I hadn't even touched in the bag yet, I was like, why the hell did I bring that? Why did I bring that? Extra clothes, extra bits and pieces. Like, I brought a pair of jeans. <laughs> okay, that was wild. Yeah, I brought a pair of jeans because I was like, when I get to Cork, maybe me and Kean would like to, you know, maybe I'd like to look respectable, you know? Okay, that doesn't actually that make was, sense. That was, that, was the, that was the idea. But like, at the same time, I was like, Jeans are heavy. The belt is heavy. The t-shirts are heavy. You don't need them. Just wear your exercise clothes. Who cares? No one cares. And no one did care. <laughs> no one cared a bit. So my sister came up with the idea is take everything you don't need. So I took everything that I don't need and it weighed about, I'd say it weighed about two kilos. Oof. And I put it into a box at the post office in Arklow and just sent it back to my parents. That's so clever. It was a really good idea my sister came up with and it took, about, took a chunk of weight off my back and took a chunk of weight off my bike and I kept going. So I stopped in Arklow for food and then I pushed on and I should have shortened the second day, but I didn't. I went all the way down to Ravens Point in Wexford <laughs> and there was a, that was the, I, I, I was planning on, I wasn't even planning on a campsite really. I was planning on another beach down in Ravens Point, but honestly, based on the night's sleep I had before, I stopped at a campsite just around the corner and it was total chance. I just cycled past it. 
I just cycled past it about five minutes before my destination. And it was an absolute dream of a campsite. Showers, a little restaurant in there, a little, little pub slash food place in there. Uh, there were showers, bathrooms, um, a lot of kids. There were a lot of kids. <laughs> there was a lot of kids and families and stuff. So it was noisy, but I didn't care. I was unconscious by the time I hit my head at the pillow. But I just felt a lot safer. Like I was still outside. I was still camping on the ground. Like the only difference between wild camping and that is just that there was people around and there was facilities to use. Um, Because uh, it was nice to get the shower as well, because up until that point, it was uh, baby wipes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> baby wipe showers. The amount of baby wipe showers that I had along the way. Oh, and it was funny, actually, when I woke up that morning, <laughs> when I woke up in the middle of the night on the first night to pee, <laughs> I was so cold and it was so wet and it was raining and I was exhausted. This is, I did this on my story that I just opened the tent. <laughs> I dug a little hole in the sand <laughs> right outside my tent, <laughs> just cocked myself around, <laughs> stuck my <laughs> stuck myself out the door <laughs> of the tent, <laughs> peed into the hole. <laughs> And buried it. That's all yeah. my story for you guys. Not the not the actual <laughs> yeah. act itself, but me talking about it. Yeah, so I remember watching that. And I actually, I think I put a clip of this into my vlog because I was watching your story. And I thought you were going to say, when you because you were building it up. You're like, you never guess what I did. <laughs> and I thought you were going to say you peed into a bottle in the tent and like didn't, left it the tent for the night because you didn't want to go outside. So I, your story was actually much better than I thought it was going to be. Well, I did that too. I just didn't talk about that. <laughs> that was that was a night I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I um, wouldn't recommend it. No, um, I can't imagine it's... No, it's messy. Ideal. And it's not a guarantee that all of it goes in the bottle. See, that's my mm. major concern with yeah, it, yeah. Mm. I was careful, but I got some pee in my tent that time. Don't worry, I cleaned it. <laughs> Sorry, turn on. <laughs> I can cut that out if you need me to cut no, that out. No, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I'm sure he's a camper. I'm, I'm sure he, uh, <laughs> he's, he's been there. Um, There's only one time I had to do a uh, wild number two. <gasps> God, I never even thought of that. <laughs> okay, so that was the, 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 the campsite, that I, first campsite that I, uh, that I stayed in was fully functional, and I got a great night's sleep. I had a shower, I got food. Um, I actually just picked up some food at the local supermarket, and like I had like pot noodle and hula hoops for... Uh, for, for dinner that night. That's another thing, diet. <laughs> you have to be careful because it's really easy to eat shit food on the road. And I got to a point where Ellen actually texted me, just like, I love you, but please eat a vegetable. <laughs> um, but actually, that was actually past the point where I already learned that lesson. And although I was showing not great food on my story because it was like fish and chips and stuff and bits and pieces that I picked up around the place, I was eating like fruit and veg by that stage as well, trying to get a salad in here and there. And you know, would it not have been like protein more so you needed in carbs? I had protein bars, carbs, but like fruit and veg as well, just for the vitamins and nutrients. Like, oh, you know, of course, yeah. Um, just to keep you going because you're burning through everything. Like everything you put into your body is getting used. Like. So um, now we're on to the second day and we're down at Ravens Point, which is a lovely nature reserve, which I was originally planning on camping in. <laughs> like, this is how dumb I am. You can't camp <laughs> in a nature reserve. It's a nature reserve. But I cycled through it anyway and I got out to this lovely little spot, took a few pictures out there where it's just like grass and grass and grass for miles and that leads into marsh and that leads into the ocean. And you could see Wexford Town later on. And I really liked that day because I took pictures of Wexford Town from Ravens Point. And then when I got to Wexford Town, I took pictures of Ravens Point from Wexford Town, so I really could see the progress. Stopped in Wexford Town, once again, had a really fancy lunch, loved it. Top notch. Can't remember the name of the place, but it's on my story. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, didn't spend too long in Wexford Town, continued on to Kilmore Key. Kilmore Key was 100% my favourite place the whole trip. It was stunningly gorgeous. I don't understand how it's not a holiday destination. It is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. Absolutely stunning. Um... At that stage, I'd actually changed the trip because I was originally planning on going down to Ross Lair and then across to Kilmore Key, which would have been a 55-kilometer cycle. But I said, fuck that. I've been to Ross Lair a bunch of times. I'm just going to cut straight across 35 kilometers, give myself a nice easy day. And it was a nice easy day, and it made my time in Kilmore Key that much more enjoyable. Um, shout out to the lady who runs the campsite in Kilmore Key. She wasn't taking campers. The place was recommended to me by the campsite in uh, that I just stayed in. She wasn't taking campers. And I didn't know that. I just arrived and then she let me stay. And uh, she's probably still not taking campers. So if you hear this, don't take this as a license to show up <laughs> and bother the poor woman. 
Um, she let me stay out of the goodness of her heart. It was just me on my own. I actually uh, set up camp next to a lovely woman called Joanne who also made it into my stories. She was really nice. She gave me a cup of tea. Um, we were chatting for ages. She's some lovely little dogs. She was living the the, the camper van lifestyle. Her and her and her husband do it regularly. Um, um, so she was a, she was lovely, and um, I had one of the nicest fish and chips I ever had in in Kilmore Key. It was absolutely amazing. But uh, that's also where I had my first uh, my, my actually my one and only uh, uh, wild number two. Interesting. Yes. Um, which I hadn't really prepared for, to be honest. Um, Even though it was a campsite? This is the thing. They weren't taking campers. So the facilities were not available. So the facilities were closed. No showers, no bathrooms. Oh, God. So, I was thinking to myself, maybe, maybe it won't be an issue. Maybe I'll be on the road by the time and I can stop somewhere and, and, and take care of it then. No. <laughs> nature calls. <laughs> yeah, when nature calls. Answer it. Um, so I wasn't really prepared for it. I, um, uh, I had like... Uh, Tissue paper and stuff in my bag for, uh, you know, <laughs> anything that yeah, I needed. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't need to go into detail. <laughs> but that, that kind of raised the question is, what do I do? You know, how do I go about this? Do I dig a hole? I can't really dig a hole. There's nowhere private. There's nowhere private at all. There was nowhere private. I checked for private places. There was nowhere private. There was people walking around, couples walking up down the beach. It was a very romantic place. The last thing I want to do is see someone taking squatting somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> somewhere ruining their lovely <laughs> romantic walk. Absolutely not. So I, in the porch of my tent, set up there. Oh my God. <laughs> God bless. God bless the, uh, the, the publicly available dog poo bag dispensers. You know the way they have them around the place? No, I didn't, but... There's beaches around the country where they just have dog poo bags. Brilliant idea. Yeah, that you can just take, which is a great idea. It should be available all over Dublin, but people will just steal them all over Dublin. Of course they would. So I got a dog poo bag. Um, popped an owl squat in the porch <laughs> of my tent. <laughs> Literally shot on your own doorstep. Shot on my own doorstep. And then picked it up like a dog shite. <laughs> bag over the hand. Whoop, wrap it up. Straight into the bin. Nice. Well, I mean, um, that is better than I thought it was going to go yeah. as a story, but... Mm. Wow. Yeah, that was fun. That was the that was the highlight. No, it wasn't the highlight. <laughs> <laughs> that was the third day. Um, but yeah, the fish and chips, stunning views, really lovely weather. Um, Kilmore Key was... Honestly, one of the best days of the entire trip. Loved that place. That uh, that was Kilmore Key. Um, absolutely stunning. Loved it. Uh, set off the next day very refreshed, having had a, a lovely chat with Joanne and had just, oh, such a lovely experience. Uh, but then, obviously, there was a couple of really, really rough days. You can't always have great days. There was some rough days. Uh, the next day was particularly bad. I was... Um, Cycling through Waterford, uh, I skipped Waterford Town just again to, to shorten my shorten my trip, um, and I ended up in a town that I can't remember the name of. It's a seaside town. It's in what Tremor. Okay. So I ended up in Tremor. It's like a it's like a holiday spot, um, surfing spot. Uh, surf- I think. No, I don't think so. Really? I don't think so. Um, it's more like a. <laughs> it's more like. Like Benidorm. <laughs> it's not. Oh, like, that's what I'm thinking. It's of. a kind of holiday spot. Holiday home. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. So uh, it was a really, it was the rainiest day of the whole trip. I was absolutely drenched. Went across the ferry from uh, Wexford into Waterford, which was absolutely stunning. Um, but absolutely soaked to the bone. Um, and Google Maps, Google Maps was trying to kill me. <laughs> Google Maps was 100% trying to kill me. It's not set up for cyclists at all. Like there is pictures that I took that I was meant to do a little story about at some stage that I just didn't. Like it took me down a death road. Like, the tiniest, most terrifying little boreen straight up a hill. And then once I got to the end of the boreen, which was at least a kind of road, then it led on to, like, a dirt track, which was overgrown with grass. And it kept telling me to go that way. So I said, fuck it. I'm too tired to complain with Google Maps, and I'm not going back down that road. So I kept going <laughs> through this this mud, grassy, brambly dirt track and ended up in a cemetery. Ended up in the back of a cemetery, and I was fully convinced Google Maps has taken me to my death. <laughs> so I cycle through the cemetery, end up in the main road, actually end up where I'm going. But I, by, by that stage, I'd fallen off my bike twice. Oof. Uh, slipped and fallen. Um, it hurt more bruised than scratched. So I just said, fuck it. I literally called my sister and she's like, look, I'm about 10 minutes outside from more. Find a place, please. Just find a place, book it for me, pay back. So she found the uh, one of the last places available, stunning B&B in Tremor. Once again, it's in my story. I can't remember the name of it. Um, stay the night 
<laughs> Stay the night in what was very clearly the honeymoon suite. <laughs> Double bed, big room, very romantic decor, big shower. Like this was a this is a couple's romantic retreat room. <laughs> And here's me <laughs> shambling in, eating all the club milks, stuffing the gold bar into my face. Literally, like, I've never, like, usually I ignore tea trays and hotels and, and uh, bed and breakfast. On this trip, I was literally just walking into those rooms and hoofing them into me, <laughs> hoovering them up. I couldn't get enough of those, like, Biscoff biscuits, like, penguin bars. These guys had a really nice spread. They had, like, a lot of bars, and I ate them all in one in. <laughs> I'm judging most places I go by the bars that they had, the tea setups. Like they had fresh milk, none of the none of the the, the little potted shite. Oh um, wow, yeah, that's good. Fresh milk, penguin bars, like branded bars, not like your cheap genetic gold bars. When's the last time you saw a gold bar? Long time. Long time. Absolutely. Just top notch stuff. That's good. That's the, the sign of a good B and B is the bar. Yeah. <laughs> um but see, these people were very intense. I love the the I loved the the accommodation and I loved the setup. Uh, I love the people. They're very, but they're very intense about COVID. They're really very serious. We are so set up for COVID. We're so serious about it. We have, but like it was just, it was almost comical. Like it was like, um, they were just like, you don't need to wear masks. It's fine. You know, two meter distance. Everything is taped out. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. I worked in the medical industry. I know what I'm doing. Like, very, <laughs> very intense. Lovely woman, but very intense. Up to 11. Uh, had a lovely breakfast, got out of there, kept going, kept going, kept going. Like, it was just, there was a lot of days where it was just like, there were, you know, it's a bit like when you're watching a TV series. You know, the way there's like important episodes and there's filler episodes. Mm -hmm. There were some filler days. There were some filler days where I was just getting through the, through the South Coast. Had some really sunny days. Uh, if you want more details, once again, it's all on my all on my story. I had some really nice sunny days. Took some detours. Went to some really nice beaches and stuff. Once again, couldn't take advantage because I couldn't leave my stuff alone. Really, really wasn't comfortable leaving my stuff alone. There was only one time where I ended up in a campsite right next to the sea where it was literally like the ocean was two seconds away from my tent, although I was in a campsite, which was great. I went for a lovely swim that day. Um, so then it took. Th then we get to Cork. And that was my big first checkpoint. Absolutely delighted to get to Cork. I made it to Cork in a week. I cycled to Cork That's in a week. That's really impressive. I was just like, I was over the moon. Do you have a kilometer? Uh, the final kilometers. No, no, to Cork. How long is it? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. Um, to drive, it's about 200 kilometers. I but think. of course, cycling, it's a different cycling route. Cycling's a different route. It was way more than 200 kilometers. Yeah, that's, two, that's 250, really 300 impressive. kilometers or something. Um... So I got to Cork. I was delighted. Um, so, uh, as I said earlier, my mother was offering me a B&B &B and a five-star accommodation every single night because she was terrified of me camping out in the open and cycling, and she didn't want me to do any of it because she's incredibly overprotective. But um, as I was coming up to Cork, my dad said, and see, okay, so when my mom offers you something, when my mom offers me something, Grant, she'd literally give you the shirt off your back, uh, off her back. Like she just, she yeah. will give anything to her kids, even at her own detriment. But dad is the complete opposite. So, but dad, uh, dad said on the call to me when I was chatting to him, was just look, you'd done a great job one week on the road, getting to Cork while you're there. Like, cause I was, I was going to stay with my friend Keen. I was I was going to camp in his garden. Basically that was the plan and hang out with him for two days. Uh, you know him, Keen um, Murphy. He was uh, one of the Irish YouTubers back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so I was going to stay with him, catch up with him, do stuff in Cork for two days. So as a gift, my dad was just like, look, just stay in somewhere, just stay somewhere in Cork nearby and me and your mother will pay for it. See, like, once again, when mom offers you stuff, you just, <laughs> yeah. you just say no. It's yeah. too much. It was a real treat coming from like, dad. With yeah. dad, it's just like, oh, wow, dad's offering it. it must be serious. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, so uh, I ended up staying in a lovely place in Cork, um, almost like just like a like a four star hotel. It was lovely, um, and uh, just around the corner from my friend Kean, and I just stayed there for two days. And literally, all we did was flake out. It was amazing. We flaked out. We watched uh, documentaries on Netflix, shows on Netflix. We watched YouTube videos. We went down to Kinsale for a day. We just hung out, ate like really shitty food, like well, no, really good food, but like really bad food. <laughs> like, yeah. And that was that was Cork. I had such a good time. It was so relaxing and it was a really lovely treat after such a tough week of cycling. And then came the second leg. Once I was all finished up in Cork, like not much to say about Cork to be honest. Um I don't even think I'd put up that many stories in Cork. I just 
I just enjoyed myself. I relaxed. I gave myself a break. And uh, then I continued on the road. And like I said, I cut off Cork and I went straight across to Killarney. And that was uh, honestly, uh, the rainy day aside, this was probably the, the toughest, scariest day of cycling because it was all on the main road. It was all on the main road directly from Cork to Killarney. And honestly, I was nearly killed three times. By, by like trucks and drivers and stuff just like yeah that tr- scares me um honestly uh the worst culprits even outside of dublin are dublin drivers <laughs> they're a bunch <laughs> of bastards um bar the, the few dublin drivers i like the country roads are i i saw so, i'm so much more comfortable cycling on country roads than i am in dublin like there's infrastructure in dublin even if it's bad but there's no infrastructure down the country. But, like, they respect cyclists down the country. They've given you loads of space. They're not, like, like, zooming past you. The only ones who didn't give me the space and didn't respect me as a cyclist on the road were Dublin drivers. Dublin Reg. Dublin Reg. Everywhere. Everywhere you go. Can't get away from them. So I uh, got to Killarney, uh, stayed in a campsite in Killarney. Um, once again, didn't see much in Killarney. Uh, it was weather. Like, honestly, weather-dependent. The places I got to see more of were the places I got to got to, and there was good weather. Like I got to see a bit more Tremor. I got to see a bit. More, well, Tremor was rainy, but I stayed. Actually, I forgot to mention I stayed in Tremor for two days. I stayed in the B and B, um, because it was just an awful day, and I'd fallen a couple of times, and I just really, really was really at the end of my tether. But the next day, rather than continuing on, I gave myself a break because I'd been pushing myself too hard. So I stayed in the campsite just down the road for a day where I just washed my clothes. I stayed there for the day. It was a very just like do nothing day all day. Uh, went to the beach, hung out, just relaxed in Tremor. Uh, did nothing that day but re- relax, stretch, and uh, and just kind of catch up on sleep and YouTube videos and stuff. <laughs> so then when I got to Killarney, uh, um, once again, it was, a, it was a really rainy day. Couldn't do much. Was really, really limited by the weather a lot wherever I went. Um, oh my God. I didn't go straight from Cork to Killarney. I stopped in McCroom halfway through. And I forgot to mention this. And it's probably one of the highlights of my entire trip. Once again, my sister booked a B&B between Cork and Killarney because the distance was massive. It was something like 100. It was one of my 120 kilometer days. So the distance was huge. So, so the way to uh, add it in a stop, basically. But there was nowhere to camp. It's not a camping spot. It's a big camping dead zone. Because it's not like all the camping spots are down by the coast. And this was me cutting across the country. But I ended up, she, she booked this, this three-star place. And it was only like 60 euro a night. Claire, it was a manor. Really? It was, it was a mansion. <laughs> it, was, it was down this mad big country road. And there was just this wall and this fence and these horses and this huge old Victorian manor house. Half of it was a B&B and half of it was their own residence. And there was like a resident, there was like a residence bar outside. Like it was stunning. I'd never stayed in a place fancier. Like four, po- I don't even, it was like, like there was some rooms with four poster beds, but this wasn't a four poster bed. This was, this was a big fancy antique furniture, like an armoire and like the whole, like I did a whole bit in my story where I was just like, oh my God, this is so fancy. <laughs> This is like something out of The Shining. <laughs> Obviously not terrifying, but like there was there was there was a terrifying like rocking horse downstairs that I kept kept spooking me, literally say, spooking me every time I went in because it was just looking at you. It was like a really old style rocking horse and looking at me. Like, ah. I think I vaguely remember this on your story actually. Oh my yeah. god, it was stunning, and the weather was actually really nice in Macroom. And the, the people that hosted me were so lovely. They actually drop drove me down to the. Is this the place that had like parts of it really old fashioned? Yeah, 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 yeah I do remember yeah, this. Yeah. Absolutely stunning. It, they drove me down to um, the, 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 the only place to eat, really, which was like a, a lovely uh, country pub where I got some, some of the best food that I had in the entire trip. It was gorgeous. Um, but at the same time, everything was gorgeous because I was like <laughs> on the road and everything was delicious <laughs> and everything was beautiful <laughs> and everything was exciting. Um, yeah, you have to remember that. Um, adventure is the best seasoning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you could be an inspirational Instagrammer with that there sort of stuff. Mm, mm. <laughs> mm, sponsor me. Um, so I actually, it was such a nice day that I ended up taking, or rather than than getting a taxi back, which they suggested I do because it was an hour walk. I just took the hour walk because it was such a gorgeous evening. It was so sunny and it was a lovely long walk. And when I got back to the um, the place I was staying, I was ready to sleep. Oh, I just, unconscious straight away. Well, had the biscuits and tea first and then 
straight to sleep. And then I got on to Killarney, and then we got a uh, Killarney. That was just a, a nightmare cycle the whole way. Um, so it was nice to take a break in Killarney. And then there was a short stop from Killarney to Inch. Now, Inch is the first real West Coast place. And the campsite was dire. Absolutely dire. <laughs> um, it was it was really, really grim. It was like on a hillside, but it was right next to the beach. And there was loads of people camping on the, wild camping on the beach. And there was loads of camper vans on the beach. That is when I had my excited, like, I've reached the West Coast moment. And I was just flipping out. And then once again, another lovely pub right down, right on the sea. And so yeah, the food is stunning. Like, it's just in the middle of nowhere, the only place to eat. And the food is just absolutely stunning, right on the coast. Really hearty food as well, because obviously the, uh, inches of surfer beach. So, like, they're all camping right out on the beach and they're all just getting their surfing lessons or they're just surfing out on the beach. It is a stunning beach. Inch, absolutely stunning spot. Please go. Please go. Um, but don't camp. <laughs> <laughs> Not a nice campsite. Um, your man was really stingy. Like, like one or two euro for everything. Like oh. two euro for 10 minutes in the shower. And I'm just like, fucking hell. Give me six, six euro worth of shower, please. <laughs> 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 Those showers, man. They were just, they were just a real, real pick me up. Inch was absolutely stunning. It was really, really exciting for me. I just spent ages walking around the beach because it was so exciting. I would have gone for a swim, but once again, just didn't feel safe. Like even, even, but at the same time, sometimes swimming was inconvenient because then once again, the facilities were really bad in that place. And the place was just not COVID conscious at all. Most places were. This was the only place that wasn't. Like, if I was going to get COVID in any place on that trip, it would have been that that campsite. Every other place was great. Um, so that was just a, a brief night. The beach was stunning. That was my probably the most excited I was I, I am in my entire story in the entire time. It was just so great to. I cycled from the east coast to the west coast. It was such a big milestone, and I was so so excited. Um, and then down, like the next go, the next day was just straight on to Dingle. Dingle was another lovely spot. But once again, didn't feel incredibly comfortable there because I think I mentioned in my story. The only time I mentioned COVID in my entire story was because it was packed. Like this was, um, so this was about a month ago now. So this is, this, this was, it was absolutely packed. And I think I saw about 15 masks the entire time I was there. Oof. People were shoulder to shoulder licking each other. On the beach? Like, uh, they, they, there's not a huge beach in Dingle, but the town itself. Oh my God, really? Jammers. Absolutely jammers. That now, the, the restaurants, me. The restaurants and stuff were very conscious and they were very like limiting seating. You have to book and stuff. It took me ages to find a place to eat and the place that I found wasn't great. So I've totally lost track of time. Uh, what month was this, just for listeners so they know? You said about a month ago, did you say what, it was September? Early September? It was August, I think. August, yeah. So August. So um, yeah. Whatever the restrictions were at that time, it's yeah. what should have been applied. Were, were yeah. light at that time, but they, they were, were light st- enough. Yeah, they were still like wear a mask. You know, keep your distance. I think we were in level two. Don't be like you know having group hugs and licking each other. Like. <laughs> yeah. um, but like it's funny, like a lot of people were were traveling to that part of the country at that time. I just missed uh, Ronan Hederman. I just missed uh, Justine Stafford. She was in Dingle literally the day before me. And she had, she had gotten a... That a, was staycation time. That was staycation. Everybody was Everybody on staycation. I missed... As soon as the restrictions eased, yeah. I missed Aideen when she was out on the road. Um, I was... Uh, was actually, she was the one I was most good at to miss. I love Aideen to bits. Um, and her and uh, John are always out, like, in their camper van, like, adventuring. Like, like right now at the moment, she's working from a a, a house in, in Belmullet with her with her other oh, colleagues. Oh, I'm so jealous. And it's, I'm so jealous. Oh, She's jealous. living the best life. I just want to live 18. Well, that's what I was like about you when I was following your stories. I was like, you're living the best life. Oh, I'm, hoping, I'm so jealous. I'm hoping to carry it on in some way. Um, so what made you decide that that's it? You were going to finish up? I stopped enjoying it. And it's not that I stopped enjoying it. I was. It was becoming a chore. Um, so I got to Dingle. The campsite there was lovely. Is the Rainbow Lodge. Best campsite. 100%. I think I... I don't think I've said that so far. No, no the Rainbow Lodge was 100% the best campsite. I want to go back there with a big group of people. The way it's laid out, there's like... There's like bunk beds, rooms inside if you want to stay inside, but there's also this really lovely garden for camping and there's this huge kitchen facility. The shower facilities are incredible. The whole place is laid out and it's gorgeous and it's so close to Dingle Town. Oh my God, I cannot stress enough how gorgeous Dingle... Uh, that Dingle campsite is, Rainbow Lodge, just really shouted from the rooftops. Amazing. So I stayed in Dingle, got some good food, walked around the town, uh, did my story, got my uh, uh, Justine Stafford recommended deep fried Mars bar, um, 
would definitely go for the deep fried Twix next time, I think. Um, <laughs> so that was lovely. Um, got my uh, ice cream as well from uh, that um, that's, uh, that ice cream place that started in Ingle that does the brown bread. Oh, you know, the, the, the oh bread. Teddy's, no? Not Teddy's, no, no, no. They do the brown bread. They get, they get, they're famous for the brown bread ice cream. Oh, um, no, I don't But I, I didn't get the brown bread ice cream. I get their chocolate. Their chocolate's really nice. But then, like, it was just a few more places in Kerry. There was up over the... Um, I think it's called Connor's Gap, I think, or it's, or it's, it's um, Connor's Point or something. It's it's Connor's something, I think. But it's this massive hill up, up out of uh, um, Dingle that leads to this viewpoint at the top, and it's all downhill the other side. It's terrifying going down the other side because it's just like the sheer cliff face on one side, and you're just bombing it down. But um, I love that moment in the trip as well because cyclists are cool. Cyclists are just really cool people. Because I was laden down and I was cycling up at a snail's pace, stopping every 10 or 20 minutes just to look at the view, but also because I was dying. <laughs> but like every single one of them passing me in their, in their speedy like Tour de France cycling gear, just like like words of encouragement, keep going, well oh, done, really? pal. Yeah, absolutely, like absolute champ, like look at you carrying all that weight. And they were flying past me, but they were just like really, really encouraging the whole way along. Really, really nice. A lot more, I bumped into a lot more cyclists on the West Coast. And I honestly, I think the only other two places I stopped in in Kerry were uh, Castle Gregory, lovely little spot. Got some really nice like fire pizza there, uh, wood fire pizza, I should say. And uh, stayed in another campsite. That was the campsite I stayed in right by the coast where I went for a swim. Lovely to get a swim in, only because I was everything was safe in the campsite and the and it was a good day and just walked right into the water. It was amazing. Um, but once again, like by the after the first couple of days, it, it did be, it, it did become like uh, like different stuff was happening every day, and I had different stuff to talk about in the story and different stuff to see. But um, the days kind of fell into a pattern, and then it just became kind of a chore: setting up the tent, getting the tent, uh, taking taking down the tent, packing everything up, unpacking everything. You know, the same routine day in day out. It just become just a bit regular you know like it, it had lost the kind of the spark of adventure yeah it so wasn't a holiday anymore or like an escape and, and by that stage it was like two two and a half weeks in and it was really really cathartic i'd really really chilled out i'd really really mellowed out i was just like at peace with the world um so i left castle gregory i stopped in camp which is really nice to meet my, uh, my my dad's elderly cousins um so they're cocooning so it was really nice to pop in and just to, just to say hello and I, yep. I, I only popped in for about an hour and it was lovely to meet them and uh, they live in a lovely, l- lovely little town called Camp, overlooking the sea, right next to a massive mountain. Oh, honestly, the most picturesque house I've ever seen in my life. And uh, then I cycled into Tralee, where I stayed in my final B and B, and my sister picked me up from Tralee. Uh, and then I stayed with her in Limerick uh, for about a week, where I talked about maybe continuing on from Limerick to Galway and finishing up in Galway. But honestly, I was, I was done. Yeah, you were so happy. So I helped my sister do her garden. You know, I helped her fix up her house a bit do a bunch of chores that she needed help with. Stayed with her for, must have been about three or four days. And then, you know, it was really, she was really, really supportive the whole time. And, you know, I love my sister. She's like my best friend. Um, So I wanted to see Clare. I wanted to see the Clare coastline because I love Clare. It's my favourite county. And uh, so rather than just going straight from, from Limerick to home, we went from Limerick all the way up the Clare coastline. So we hit all the spots. We hit Kilkee. We hit Spanish You Point. went on a little driving holiday. A little driving Amazing. holiday. Amazing. It was just, it was a road trip is what it was. Yeah. We we, hit, we stopped in all the towns, Kilkee, Spanish Point, uh, La Hinch, Ennis Tymon, which is just off the coast. I love Ennis Tymon because it's like, it's a waterfall town. It's a river, got a river going right through it, but it's, it's, it's like, it's like a, a town built on a waterfall. That's and it's gorgeous. That does sound good. Um, so I always recommend people pop in and see this lovely hotel there called The Falls. Um, and then from Clare, went through the burn, got to drive right through the burn, took turns driving, of course. Uh, we had the dog with us the whole time, which was great, James. And uh, then we stopped uh, in, we skipped Galway City because my cousins weren't there. And uh, we went straight to where my cousins live in Balnasloe in Galway and stayed with them for the night. Uh, had a lovely dinner with them. They, they, they had just had a barbecue. So it was a, that, that, that day... And the, the day after were stunningly hot, like the hottest days of the summer. And they had a barbecue. And so we, we basically just arrived to barbecue food and family. And it was so nice. It was just such a nice, chill way to end the holiday, like helping my sister with her house, getting some work done. And then just going on our little family road trip and then stopping at family, getting my barbecue and then driving back to Dublin to see the parents. It was just 
so nice and it's really like it's almost get, getting me right back into that zen point i was i was a really really zen when i got back just at peace with the world is the best way to put it and even just talking about it now is is bringing me back is bringing me back to that point and it was just such a wonderful experience and i can't wait to do it again yeah and yeah, I was about to say you're not put off cycling anyway because you cycled here today. <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm, yeah, I'm not. Well, to be honest, um, my car crapped out on me right before the trip. The radiator gave out. So, so even if you wanted to, stop even if cycling. I wanted to drive, even if I wanted to give up cycling when I got back, nope, nope, this is my curse now. I'm not. I'm cycling. I'm still cycling, but I'm cycling. It's more practical cycling. I'm going to get my hair cut. I'm going to see my parents. I'm going to come to do a, a podcast with you. <laughs> it's just more cycling to go places. Um, I should, I should like. I, there's, it's nothing stopping me from cycling out to Hoth or cycling out here and there and everywhere. Just, I'm just being lazy. <laughs> um, sure, I've done enough. No one can fault me. <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's very true. But no, I got plans next year to do more, uh, more adventure cycles, more trips with friends. Hopefully, hopefully, we're in a place next year where we can do it. But sure, fuck it. I've done it alone before. I'll do it alone again. <laughs> But That's no, the spirit. I'm, I'm definitely, uh, my friends think I'm going a bit mad, but um, my family thinks I'm going a bit mad as well. But uh, I'm very focused now on two things, uh, which is getting a van and living that van life for a little while. Amazing. And we'll, we'll have to have you back on to, to talk more about that when that happens. Yeah, but then again, at the same time, like, you know, I could say that I'm like a friend of mine, like, I would never have considered it at all before my trip. But seeing so many vans on the trip, seeing so many people living from vans, you know, looking into it, um, it's definitely something that I want to do at some point in my life. And I may as well do it now while everyone is doing it. Everyone is doing it. So I'm going to buy a van. I'm going to use it. Um, so the, the plan is, right, I want to buy a fixer-upper housewise at some point. I'm going to need to get a job. I need to get money. I need to get a bit of a mortgage. So even if I, even if I get a house for under 100 grand somewhere down the country in the middle of nowhere, it's going to need to be fixed up. That's going to cost money. And a van is definitely going to be a, an incredibly useful tool. You can haul stuff around. You can keep all your tools in it. You can even work from it if you've got a tarpaulin. Um, and I say tarpaulin, uh, an awning. Um, you know, it's a very functional vehicle. And I definitely want a more functional vehicle. But at the same time... It's not going to be that functional, ne- functional if you put a bed into it and if stuff. If you put a bed into it. But at the same time, you can you can do both. You know, if you... Like, if I, if I buy a place to fix up and I can live in my van in the meantime, that'd be great. But sure, to be honest, I'd probably use my sister's as a home base. But see, there's a thing about, like, you can buy a van and you can do it up. And you can ha- put a really, really good finish on it. And it can just be your van. That can just be your camper van forever. Or you can buy a van, get a bunch of plywood, um, get, get some nice thick oak plywood and just fit out a bed platform, fit out a countertop platform, fit out a sink platform. But it's all plywood. So and you not, can rip it out later when you just rip it out yeah. later. Like you, you haven't put a massive finish on it. It still works. It does the exact same job as your really fancy uh, high finish fans. Like obviously you still want to insulate it. You want to put in your vent. You want to put in your solar panel for any power that you want inside it. That kind of stuff can't be ripped out. But the big stuff like the bed and the counter and stuff, that's you just rip it right out, put it back in later if you need to. Repla- replace the floor. It's all ply. But I think having lived that life, even for two weeks, like where you were in campsites and, you know, you had to find facilities and stuff, it's given you an idea of whether or not you could do that, that longer that term. Van life is luxury compared to that. Yeah, and take that, out the cycle and actually... Uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I'd strap a bike to the back and well, I'd, you'd have to, I'd yeah, use yeah. it as a home base. Like 100%. You'd actually be able to then go surfing and stuff because you'd have That's a van to lock your stuff into. I, I Okay, I'm not going to call myself a surfer, but when I was younger... I can't believe I younger in my early 20s um i did i did surfing i went on surfing trips. surf i went surfing trips with my friends like i wasn't like a like a surfer kid but i enjoyed it i was terrible at it but it was so much fun like trying to balance yourself up on the board and it's so it's good exercise oh my god it's like um it's the kind of exercise where you're just all day like messing about in the water and you get out and you're exhausted and all you want to do is eat all the carbs in existence yeah, I went surfing recently, actually, and I like the next day my arms were killing me. You're just, you're just wrecked, like yeah. <laughs> it's an absolute workout. Do you ever go skiing? Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like you'd be out in the slopes all day, and you wouldn't think you're exercising, but as soon as you sit down, you're just like your legs are never working again. <laughs> but so yeah, well done. I think it's a really good achievement, and um, I know cool. I was glued to it when it was happening. 
and check out your Instagram. Hey, if you if you want to relive it, it's all there. Like, you know, you can, if, if you want to play it, I marked every day, day one, day two. So if you want to relive it and pretend that I'm still doing it, you can just literally sit down and watch day one on, on one day and watch day two on the next day. Or you can just binge it. That's what everyone yeah, does. Yeah, binge watch. <laughs> but it's still all there. It's my They're my only highlight reels besides my highlight reel and my dog. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to shout out? I don't Other think than so. your Instagram? This was very, like, very rambly. Like, we were all over the place at some point. I was really, like, jumping from prep to, to story to to rushing through some parts and being too detailed in other parts. But no, I think I covered everything. I think that there, that, that is the experience, and uh, I would highly recommend it. Um, obviously, safety is a concern. If you can do it with a partner, obviously, that's harder with COVID. Do it with a partner, 100%. That would definitely make the whole experience a lot easier. You could look out for each other's stuff. You could take turns swimming. You could wild camp because you have someone with you. You know, it's less... It's scary. It's scary. Less yeah, less yeah. scary is the word. Like, because it is, it is quite scary when you're literally on your own in the middle of nowhere and you're jumping in shadows. Um, it's definitely something I would recommend. Um, it's 100% taking me out of the comfort zone that I've been living in for a very long time. And honestly, it was tremendously good for my mental health. Like I said, when I was finished, I was at peace with the world. And I'm usually... The opposite, <laughs> not at peace with the world at all, and uh, certainly not at peace with myself. It's uh, it's a constant battle, and it's nice to have this. The only word for it is catharsis. It's a hundred percent. It is a place of just of peace and tranquility, and you just can't get in your typical kind of everyday life. You just can't get it because, like, you have you have responsibilities, and I get that. You can't live your life like. I'm turning into such a goddamn hippie in my later life. Like people keep asking me what my dream job is, and I keep pointing them back to that amazing TikTok where they say, you know, it's like, <laughs> "What do you mean, dream job, my darling? I do not dream <laughs> of labor. I keep going back to, I don't dream of labor. I don't want to work. I don't like. But at the same time, that's not me being lazy. I want like, I'd love to work and it not feel like work." You know, I'd love to, it'd be great to be an influencer, but I'm, I'm terrified of putting content out there. You know, like, that's a, my own battle to deal with. And I've been dealing with that for a long time. Uh, but I'd love to find something that I could, I could combine both. You know, I could, I could live that kind of really cathartic, carefree lifestyle where you're out and about. Some people can do it, you know, like, you know, with Aideen, her and her work pals renting a house down in Bell Mullet in Mayo, you know, that's incredible. But I don't know if I could do that, work from a laptop and, and, it'd still be working from home for me and I'd be just off my nut, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I need to, like, I'm I'm an odd duck. My parents are forever struggling with me. Um, <laughs> graduating 10 years after everybody else, not knowing my directions in life, still not knowing my directions in life. I'm, I'm completely and utterly lost in life. Um, I'm not in a bad, like, I used to be lost in life and in a bad place with it. Now I'm in a lost in life and in just kind of a, you know, I'll, 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 I'll have to figure out eventually you know, I have to figure something out eventually. Well, sure, at the end of the day, I'm, I either figure it out or I die, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and listening to the Storytime Podcast. Please subscribe on YouTube and follow us on all the good audio platforms. Please check out Niall and his stories on Instagram of all of his adventures. I hope you enjoyed it. I read it. Um, it was really fun coming here. Thank you for having me, Claire. Thank um, you for coming. I've never been uh, the, the guest on a podcast before, so... This well, you're a, a natural. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I hope my story was worthy of the Storytime podcast. Absolutely. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you for having me. This podcast was brought to you by The Shift. For more like this, check out theshift.ie.